Hi, let's talk about how to use the flatbed grinders. In our studio, we have two of these. Some studios, there is a singular one with diamond pads and they're removable. Either way, they do the same thing, which is to grind surfaces flat. Ours are more traditional. and They use a loose slurry of silicon carbide grit, um, fresh and old. First, let's talk about safety stuff. Um, whenever I'm working in the coal shop, no matter what I'm working on, safety glasses, obviously. If you have uh, prescription lenses, that's fine. Safety glasses wrap around even better. Um, even if it wasn't coronavirus times, I would be wearing some sort of mask. Um, as I've mentioned in other videos, anytime that you grind glass, you're gonna create glass dust. Even though there's a lot of uh, um, water to keep the dust down in here, I don't want to get glass into my lungs. Even though it won't get, give me silicosis, it's still really difficult for your lungs to shed glass because it's very heavy, the particles are heavy. So those are the basic safety things. Um, I've also got on a nice apron here because this is a very messy process and I normally would have on big rubber boots as well to keep my uh, shoes and feet clean. So, Let's talk about how to turn this machine on and off and some of the issues uh, that you might encounter with this machine. Basically, there's a flat wheel that's gonna spin. This is a trough that's gonna hold grit. And there's usually a water feed. Ours is uh, an automatic water feed where I turn it on here and there's a, an adjustment here. Some places I've seen where there's basically just a jug of water hanging up here and a hole in the, the jug of water uh, and it drips down onto the thing. These can be really simple for people setting up their own sort of studio spaces. I must have the water on. For our studio, the lines, when this is in line with the hose, that's the water being on. I usually turn it off at the wall and don't mess with it over here because I want it to stay adjusted over here. On our other one over there, it's a slightly different kind of valve but it's the same thing once the valve is in line with the hose the water is on and I always turn it off when I'm done so this is my fine adjustment for my water this is where the grit is gonna live and as you can see this flows down here the wheel spins and the force spins the grit out and it covers the wheel when I'm done with the wheel here's what I'm gonna do turn the water off at the wall move this over and let this thing air dry. So it would be spinning and I would let it spin until it's thoroughly dry. The reason why I wanna move this over is because even if I turn this off at the wall, there might be some residual water left in here. I don't want a big puddle like this. This will create a rust spot. And that rust spot, even though it's not gonna actually seriously damage the wheel very much, what it can do is make a grabby spot as you're grinding, it can grab your work and want to pull it out of your hand. So we don't want our wheels to end up like that. Some places wash the wheel off when they're done. This is a designated 80 grit wheel. I have found there to be no harm in letting the, the grit dry on here. And in fact, it provides some protection for it to not rust. So that's how you, uh, how, how you um, wear the orientation of everything here. On the front of these machines, is the on off switch and you'll notice a big giant label that says 80. On well, this one, on and off switch here, 220. So if you're familiar with using other grinding tools like the belt sander, the belt sander usually has more steps. So this is going from 80 to 220. On the belt sander we went 80, 120, then 220. The reason is really simple. These tools are very hard. It's a piece of steel with grit that's very hard. Grinding on a hard piece of glass is a very aggressive tool, whereas the belt sander is not as aggressive. It's soft, flexible, and malleable around the surface of the glass. So, on the belt sander, you have more of those intermediary steps to make sure that you're working your way closer and closer to polish. On this one, we can effectively remove 
the 80 grit surface with the 220 grit surface because it's such an aggressive tool. It still takes a little bit, but that's why there's a, a step there. Now we only have these two wheels. Some places only have one, they have a rough grinding 80 grit, and everything else is done using hand lapping. That's gonna be in a separate video that we're gonna talk about in a little bit uh, later on, but just to know that the only two steps that we're gonna have on these flatbed grinders are gonna be the rough shaping wheel, the 80 grit, and then the uh, fining out wheel, this is a 220. Like I said, some places <clears throat> that you work only have one, some have multiple, some have the diamond pads. Whatever studio you're working at, make sure that you know what their protocol is. You would never contaminate someone's wheel with grit that doesn't belong in there. Which brings me to thinking about our community and our space. This wheel has 80 grit on it. That has 220. It's okay for me to move from here back to here. The 220 is not gonna contaminate the 80 because it's smaller. You would never wanna get any of this 80 grit onto that 220 grit wheel or into that 220 grit slurry because a one particle of 80 in there could scratch your glass and make it very difficult for you to move on from 220. So one of the things that as I'm working that I'm gonna be harping on is being very, very clean and making sure that I'm, I'm cleaning myself, my apron and my glass and all my tools before I move from one wheel to the next because we don't want any 80 from here ending up in a 220. All right, so let's start up about uh, how to use this thing safely. The wheel is gonna be spinning like this. It's basically spinning counterclockwise, okay? And I wanna make sure that as I'm working on it, I am holding this on this side so that the wheel doesn't grab it and take it out of my hand. The other thing is to realize that it's the grit that is gonna be doing the grinding. The wheel itself is just a steel wheel. It won't grind anything. There is no grit embedded in this wheel. So what's actually doing the grinding on, on this piece of glass is the grit that's running between the metal wheel and the hard surface of the glass. If I push down too hard, I can prevent grit from getting under it, the glass and it won't grind, okay? I also want to, if I push down too hard, if this is a big enough surface, it can suction onto the surface and pull it out of my hand. So I'm always going to be making sure that I've got a way to keep this from getting sucked out of my hand that way. If I do lose a piece of glass and it does get pulled out of my hand, a bounce around there, I would never reach into or under or around this spinning wheel to get a piece of glass. I would turn the machine off, wait until it thoroughly stops and then retrieve my glass. Unless my glass is sitting over here and I can easily reach it safely, I am not gonna reach anywhere near this wheel. This wheel is literally hundreds of pounds. You can not stop it with your hand. And it's attached to a very powerful motor. Under no circumstances, like if this thing falls and this is like this underneath here, I am not gonna reach underneath there and try to get it. I'm gonna turn the machine off and then I'm gonna reach in there and, there and get it. So as I'm working, if I'm using a tool like this, I make sure it stays really far away from this wheel and I'm just aware of that. The final thing about this wheel to be aware of is that as I'm grinding on the glass, the wheel itself is also grinding. The, that grit is hard enough to, to sand down the surface of the wheel and the glass. That means the edge of this steel wheel can end up being very sharp. So you wanna be aware of that as you're working as another safety thing. Finally, talking about the surface being ground. As I'm working, you're gonna watch me work over the entire surface of this wheel, because like I said, as I'm grinding on this piece of glass, the wheel itself is getting ground down. So if I only stay in one spot, if I hold it here like this, I can grind a little groove in there, and then if I go to sand something that's bigger, it won't touch right there, it won't sand it. So we're trying to keep this wheel dressed flat by grinding all the way. So from interior to exterior. There's no reason to be like this. That is um, being very inconsiderate of this really expensive tool that the rest of the community uses. So you use the whole wheel. 
So now I'm gonna start my demo of grinding, and show you how you know um, uh, <clears throat> when you're perfectly ground all the way through a surface, what to look for, and then how do you know how to move on to the next wheel and get rid of all of that surface. But before I do any of that, I have to prepare my materials. And this is probably the single most important thing to making you have a successful experience grinding on a flatbed wheel. So I've got a couple of things. I've got some fresh grit, okay? Fresh 80 grit wheels, uh, grit, very sparkly, very sharp, very big. And I've got a little bit of some older, which is some of the stuff that's dug up from around in here, but not as wet. I've got some of this stuff that it's got some new in it, but you, as you can see, it's a little bit finer. What this is actually is some ground up metal, a bunch of ground up powdered glass, and used grit, all mixed together. Straight fresh grit by itself flows off of here really fast. Um, if I'm just using old recycle, I'm not getting enough new stuff in there but a right mixture will give you a, a nice slurry that will drain off of here in a nice speed and keep you working and grinding. So I've got a separate container here. You might wanna come over here to see it a little bit easier. Got a little spatula. And I'm gonna mix up the appropriate consistency. So this stuff is already almost the right consistency. It's like kind of hard. I won't need to add very much water to this. Normally when I do this, this is a lot drier and there is some dry stuff in here. I've got a little bit of bucket of water in my bucket and I'm going to try to mix this up. Now I want to show you something with this material. This material, if it has too much water in it, becomes thixotropic. As I tap it, look at that, you see how that's becoming liquid? That's a thing called thixotropic, which means that vibrations turn it from solid to liquid. That becomes important. This wheel vibrates a lot as it's running. If I have this the wrong consistency, the entire pool of like little, little mound of um, grit that I have will liquefy, turn like this, and slowly flow downstream like a giant mudslide, okay? That's not what we want. We want particles of grit flowing down at a consistent rate. So that is, even though it looks pretty, what um, looked pretty solid, as I'm vibrating it, it's becoming liquid. That's too wet. I need to definitely have it drier than that. That's why uh, having a little container of some dry material around is really useful. So that's a pretty good consistency. Now I can put that in my trough. You can see that this wheel has been used a lot already today, so it's, there's a lot of wet material in here. That wet material is kind of useless. So one of the things that, if I'm gonna be doing a lot of cold working, the first thing I do when I get to the space on, on a particular day, is I scoop up a bunch of that dry material and put it to one side in case I need to mix more slurry, okay? If it's all wet like this, which is gonna be after I work for a while, then that stuff is no good to me because I need to mix some damp with some dry to get what I want. So there's that. I'm gonna turn on my water. Turn on my water here. That's way too much. Drip, drip, drip. Kind of looking for that. Look over here. You see that it's a little trail of water and, and hopefully grit together, water and grit, running down and dripping off. Now look down here. Um, I'm gonna use my clean finger. So that looks like grit, but it is not. That is just dirty water. That's not gonna do any grinding. I need to come up here and disturb some of the grit particles, make sure it's got a clear path to run down. Now look at the difference. That's grit. That's what's gonna grind my glass. If there's no grit in this water, nothing is gonna be happening. You won't be getting any work done. So now I'll turn on my machine, it's gonna get really loud, I apologize. Yeah, 
If if I have too much used slurry, if I have too much used slurry in here, the grit gets tight and doesn't want to release particles. It becomes like this solid mass of mud. And you can see that it's happening right now. That that drip is pretty clear. When I do like this, almost no grit is coming up. This is a small amount of grit. I'm going to have to keep messing with it like this to get more grit to come off. Again, if there's no grit coming off here, there's none on the wheel, and I'm not getting any work done, okay? So that shows me that all the stuff that's in here needs to be scraped out, thrown away, because it's got too much glass mixed into it already from just a lot of use. And that's just what happens. Some places recycle their grit, they sift all this through a sifter and recycle it. We don't do that because we just don't go through enough for that to matter. But again, look here, see how clear and white that drip is? And that's showing me that there's no grit coming off. Because of the mixture, I'm going to have to keep messing with this grit, keep disturbing it on a regular basis to get grit to come off so I can get work done. It won't always be that way. Sometimes when you're working, uh, this is really fresh and it just comes off beautiful and nice. But if you've got a lot of old stuff like this, you're gonna have to keep messing with it. So now let's talk about grinding. So I wanna try to grind, say this surface here back to where the whole thing is flat. When I'm doing this, I'm gonna start closest to me, move away at a nice reasonable pace, for a certain number of times, say four or five times. Then I pick it up closest to me. I'm trying to imagine I'm like a helicopter lifting straight up. I don't want to tip and catch a corner. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, set it down nearest to me. And go back and forth the same number of times. Do it again. Until I've turned it in all four directions. I'm keeping my eye on the grit the whole time. I can see that grit is clear, that, that drip is clear. So, I'm gonna go up here, disturb my trough, get more grit coming out, and then keep working. I wanna make sure there's grit always on this wheel, otherwise, again, I am not gonna be getting any work done. So that's pretty aggressive and pretty fast. Now we can check to see what we got. So you can already see how much I've ground. There's a little spot here that's shiny. Um, this will become even more obvious if I dry it off. I use my air gun, again it's really loud. So now you can see the obvious difference in the surface between what was shiny. Now, in this particular demonstration, I'm trying to make a cube. So I would have some sort of a tool that checks right angles. And I could use that to check all those angles. And then if I'm off in one particular direction, I could grind using the wheel. Here is the key. Let's say, which it looks like the case, this side is high. I want it to make a right angle, but it's like, like that. The leading edge of that wheel grinds more. So I can kind of go, oh, all right. It's high here, right? I am gonna mark that side and just grind it with that side facing into the wheel because it's gonna grind more on the leading edge. I'll do that, I'll clean it off, check square again and keep doing that. Once I've got it square, then I go back to my same pattern of five times back and forth, pick it up, turn it, five times back and forth. What you'll never see me do is try to force it to be straight by doing this. First off, that's super unsafe. That can get sucked out of your hand and thrown into your face, okay? So I'm never here like this. Second off, 
if I'm here and I'm pushing on it and I'm going like this, I'm very likely going to be tipping it like this as I'm grinding and it's going to push on one side more than the other. But if I'm right on top of it, this is the leading edge. Watch what happens as I grind this. So I'm going to pick that up and you can see that it grown more there but left a little of that sharpie there. Can you see that? It's grinding that leading edge. I'll go back on it just a little bit longer. Now all the sharpie's gone. You can see that, that, how that grit is, right? That it's piling up here and it's less here. It has ground this side down more. So that's how I'm gonna sneak up onto square or sneak up onto um, straight. So I'm grinding something I want to be straight. Me forcing this to grind straight will not work. Me letting it do its own thing, it will work. The other thing is I'm not pushing. I'm letting the weight of this object grind it because this object is fairly balanced. If I had a vase, it would be fairly balanced. So if I just support the weight and let it balance, it wants to balance straight up and down. If I push it to one side or the other, try to make it straight, I will push it off. And I have ground through the bottoms of faces before trying to force it. But if I follow this, the same pattern, five down, five down, five back, using the whole wheel, pick it up, turn it. And I do that on all the sides, it will grind straight. I'm gonna dry it off and show you. So you can see how of almost ground down to the shiny glass. There was a little dimple in this. Now I'm gonna bring up one other little thing. So far, all these corners are rounds, these edges. I haven't ground far enough down on any of them. But over here you can see that I have, hold on. I have a very sharp edge right there, very crispy. If you look really close, you can see that there's a little black line running up and down there. That is because I beveled the edge of that corner. If I don't do that, it will chip. It's really difficult to see, but right there, are some tiny, tiny chips on the edge of that glass. Tiny little chips are on those corners. That is because the sharp edge of a corner of glass has no support. So if it's sharp like this and something's pushing on it, it will chip it. That's especially true, not just for edges, but for corners. If I'm looking at like a corner like this and there's force pushing on just that corner, it will take that whole thing off. So I have to make sure that those edges are beveled. So here's how we do that. It's really, really simple. I've got a piece of an old belt. We keep, we save all of our belts from our belt sanding. I can either use this by hand and sand like this, or I can place it on a surface, fold this out of 45 and go like this. If it's a big object, I might use the belt sander with 400 grit, but I like the sensitivity of doing it by hand. So now, I'll show you. Again, kind of difficult to see at this scale, but right there is a flat edge. If I want to really bring it into focus, I am going to just take my Sharpie. Now you can really see that bevel. That's also showing me the thickness of the bevel. As I keep grinding, 
that bevel will get smaller and I have to put it back in and sharpie it again. But it gives me a visual reference for how thick my bevel is. That's about a minimum bevel that you want. You probably want a little bit thicker bevel than that so that you, have, you don't have to keep putting it back in. By the time you finish grinding through the 220 and the 400 and the 600 and all that, that bevel will be almost gone, all right? So the Sharpie is your best friend in here. It shows you where you've been and it keeps you safe in terms of not chipping the sides. So if I'm trying to turn this into a, this whole thing into a cube, I'm gonna use my shaping wheel, the 80 grit, and do all the sides. Make sure I'm checking for square everywhere, bevel all the edges, and then I'm gonna move on to the 220. And the 220 works exactly the same way. If there's no grit coming off that trough, you're not getting any work done. You're just trying to grind glass with a piece of metal. And I wanna see if you can hear the difference. I usually can hear it. So I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get some grit on, on this wheel and grind this, this piece of glass. And you'll be able to hear, it's a kind of an aggressive quite aggressive sound. You can kind of hear a throatiness to it. Way out here it sounds different. It's higher pitch, there's very little grit on that edge because it hasn't reached it yet. It washed all off. So listen to that. And now, there's no grit on there, now listen to this now. Almost no sound of grit. It's just metal. That's not doing anything. It's not grinding, it's not doing anything. Look, no grit. I'm trying to grind a piece of glass with metal. So now let's uh, go through again, putting this away. I'm gonna turn off the water at the wall and move this to one side and I'm gonna let this air dry. Probably takes 10 to 15 minutes. Everybody in our shop knows that that's what we do. So if any student is walking through here, grad student, senior student, whatever, another intro student, if they hear the wheel running and they see that it's dry, they'll come over and turn it off. And again, the on off switch is right on the front. I only have a couple more things to say about <clears throat> protecting your work. So after I finish on that wheel, I am going to aggressively clean this. I'm gonna wash my arms. I'm gonna wipe down my apron to make sure that I've gotten rid of all the 80 grit. Now, if I do that and then I set this down, screw. Because I guarantee you that this table is covered in grit and I don't know what kind. So I almost always, if I'm working on a piece for myself, I'm gonna have something that I can set my work on. A piece of newspaper is perfect because I can just flip the page between grits, right? Get an old newspaper, put it down here. If I'm on 80 grit, I'm on one paper, flip the page, put it down for 220. Something to protect this so that I'm not taking a 220 surface and setting it down on 80 grit and scratching it, okay? So that's the first thing is like to make sure that you've got your sort of area clean and that cleanliness will just make your life easier if you're trying to go for a full polish. Um, make sure you clean not just that, but you clean your tools. If your hands are super dirty and you're using a Sharpie, you're gonna get the Sharpie dirty. So same thing, I wipe down or wash down everything. All of my measuring tools, tape measure, um, right angle square, my hands, my everything. That will try to prevent contamination when you move to finer and finer grits. That's it for now. Next time when we come back, we're gonna be talking about hand lapping. See you soon.